Physician-assisted suicide is wrong morally, medically and politically. We're not cold-hearted or inhumane. We recognise the immense suffering that at times drives people to such an option. However, on balance, we think it is the wrong move. The context of this debate is one where we think we are in danger of witnessing a change in human values. From a society which regards life as something sacred to one where death is a means of escape. It doesn't matter whether one is motivated by religious reasons or atheist humanist motives. We think that life is not only worth fighting for, but that we must give affirmation to those who struggle against all adversity, be it physical or mental. For us, the value of life and the pleasures of life can be experienced even if one is paralysed from the neck down or suffers from any other severe impairment. Just think of Stephen Hawking, who despite his disability, has made vast contributions to the world of science. The problem we now face, however, is that our culture seems to validate giving up and letting go. In fact, this is increasingly presented as the dignified thing to do. But for those of us who value all humanity, it is imperative that we make clear that the dignity of life involves fighting against all odds and sending a message out very clearly that we should be valued and can experience the pleasures and joys of human experience no matter what our condition. We understand the individual cases of heartbreak involved. However, we must look at the bigger picture. Because in the words of Clifford Longley, your right to die undermines my right to life. Thus, a society that gives legitimacy to physician-assisted suicide in effect redefines certain groups as a burden, as a lesser form of life. Without doubt, this will send out a dangerous message to those who suffer extreme illness and are dependent upon others. They'll see themselves as a burden. To relieve society of that burden, they will choose to go down the route of physician-assisted suicide. This is the reality of our opponent's argument. For this reason, we conclude that physician-assisted suicide should remain illegal. spiritual needs. Contrary to what's been alluded to by the proposition, 
This theatre, which is delivered in a compassionate, supportive environment, provides the overwhelming majority of patients with a dignified, peaceful, and pain-free day. The proposition wrongly claims that the wishes of the dying are often ignored at the end of their lives. It is crucial to emphasise how much control patients have over their everyday management, both throughout the medical journey and towards the end of life. From refusing treatment to advanced care planning, there are several avenues that ensure respect for patient autonomy. It should be our priority to continue to improve and expand these services rather than undermine and undervalue them through the introduction of assisted suicide. Studies have shown that the quality of palliative care delivered where assisted suicide is legal is compromised and we cannot risk jeopardizing these irreplaceable services. Doctors are bound by good medical practice, which is the, the ethical guidelines that they provide you with, to work always with the patient's best interests. However, this is a complex, <coughs> multi dimensional decision that requires understandings of the circumstances of the case. Therefore, it's best carried out by a doctor that knows the patient well. However, statistics show that in Oregon, for those requesting assisted suicide, the average length of the doctor-patient relationship is only 10 weeks. This is likely due to patients seeking out doctors that will endorse their request and begs the question as to whether the patient's interests are truly being served in these circumstances. Fundamentally, the introduction of assisted suicide would change the moral foundations of the NHS. In a society increasingly obsessed with cost of healthcare, it's far from fantasy to see the seemingly controlled adjustment spiraling out of control. Care equals cost, and it would be far cheaper for us to encourage our aging and increasingly comorbid population to undergo an early assisted death than to undergo lengthy and expensive lifelong treatment. Under a guise of best interests and autonomy, we risk reverting to the archaic perception <coughs> sick and dying as helpless, burdensome, and disposable. In conclusion, laws are more than just regulatory instruments. They send a message about how we should conduct ourselves and treat one another. The resulting consequences for doctors, their relationships with their patients, and the workings of the NHS are too hazardous, too hazardous us to reasonably consider introducing assisted suicide in our country. Thank you. My partner Jenna and I intend to demonstrate that physician-assisted suicide is the only ethical and practical choice available to us outside of euthanasia. We stress that we propose a system based upon the current system operated in Oregon. Under this system, physician-assisted suicide is defined as a system in which a doctor prescribes life-ending drugs to patients without physically administering them. We would make this process available only to the terminally ill or patients with incurable medical conditions who personally feel that their lives have been made unlivable. We also propose that anyone with a psychiatric problem should not be allowed to commit physician-assisted suicide. Now, we strongly believe that if people are determined to end their lives, that they will attempt to do so. However, this can be a very painful process. According to Dignitas, 98% of suicide attempts are unsuccessful and generally worsen a person's condition. By consulting a doctor and being prescribed effective medication to end their lives, patients can avoid such pain. In this way, physician-assisted suicide is a merciful act. Furthermore, under the current system, relatives who assist their loved ones are, in ending their lives at their request are considered as criminal and can be prosecuted for manslaughter with a maximum potential sentence of 14 years according to The Guardian. This is also the case for relatives that help their loved ones to travel ab abroad to die. Ladies and gentlemen, this is inhumane. Almost everybody in the UK has people near to them who have suffered unbearable pain, and few, can, and few could ignore the wishes of such loved, one, loved ones. Introducing a system of physician-assisted suicide would free carers and relatives from the burden of such emotional responsibility. They could help the people close to them without outrageous personal risk. In conclusion, between 5 and 10% of those dying cannot have their pain adequately relieved, even with the best palliative care. This is according to the organisation Friends at the End.
thank you, Sue, and thank you for the very kind invitation to talk to you this evening. I'm speaking here in favour of the legalisation of assisted suicide, but I think it's really important to clarify exactly what I'm for in this context. I am certainly not for immediate access to assisted suicide on demand. My argument is a much more modest one. I believe that we owe it to people who experience unrelievable and irreversible suffering, and importantly also to those who worry that this lies ahead of them, to do all that we can to alleviate their fear and distress. Now, this is not an argument in favour of death. On the contrary, I think an effective assisted dying law could extend and enhance the lives of people currently facing the prospect of a prolonged and distressing decline. Now, what do I mean by that? Currently in the UK, patients whose fear of dying is overwhelming can, if they can afford it and are well enough to travel, visit a Dignitas clinic in Zurich. Or if they're fit enough, they can kill themselves before they become incapacitated. Now, in both cases, this means they die sooner than they would if they had access to assisted dying in the UK. And it inevitably means that they don't have some of the most basic components of what we might call a good death, being at home um, with the people you love most around you. If you go to Dignitas, you're in a clinic in Zurich, very far from home and often far from some of the people you most care about. If you kill yourself, you may feel the need to do so alone in order to avoid incriminating your family or friends. An effective assisted dying law could also enhance the lives of the dying because it's reassuring to a much wider section of society that would ever, in fact, access it. There was a recent study of patients requesting euthanasia in the Netherlands, and it found that the vast majority did not at that time want to die. What they wanted was an insurance policy against future suffering. Fewer than 9% of the people who initiate requests for euthanasia and assisted suicide in the Netherlands die as a result. What the evidence shows is the existence of legalised assisted dying provides reassurance to people. It in fact appears to enhance their ability to tolerate the present burdens of treatment. So it's the prospect of being able to maintain control and autonomy at the end of life, which is of value to many, many more people than would ever actually opt for an assisted death. It's also really important to note at the outset that there's a really critical difference between my position and that of the opponents of this motion, because I agree with them that a life which is full of suffering can nevertheless have tremendous meaning and value. They would clearly not seek an assisted death for themselves, and that's a decision which I would both respect and admire. But having seen people suffer at the end of their lives, I'm fairly sure, though nobody can ever be completely sure, that I would not want to continue living once life had permanently lost any meaning for me. Yet the opponents of this motion's view is that I must endure a dying process which fills me with horror. Now, in a liberal society where we accept that people's fundamental moral values differ, we should strive as far as possible to ensure that people, like the opponents of this motion and those of us in favour, can coexist without any of us forcing our values upon anyone else. So I wouldn't force assisted death upon them, but they would force me to endure a death which I would find intolerable. <laughs>